Catherine the Great moved to a foreign land as a teenager and became one of the most important leaders in history. Known for her long and prosperous reign over the Russian Empire, the Empress transformed the nation's culture while expanding its borders. She also heavily influenced by the Enlightenment and championed education, all while holding the balance of power, however. Her reign also came with its challenges and myths that live on to this day. So, who was the Russian Empress, truly? Let watch this video till the end and discover more about the 18th century's most powerful woman. Catherine was born Sophie Friedrich August von Anhaltzerbst on April 21, 1729, in Stettin, Prussia, modern-day Schiessen, Poland. Her father, Christian August, was a minor German prince and general in the Prussian army. Her mother, Princess Johanna Elizabeth, had distant links to the Russian royal family. Growing up, Catherine was educated in religion, history, and languages, she spoke German, French, and, later, Russian. Catherine first met her husband-to-be. When she was just 10 years old, they married on August 21, 1745. The young Sophie converted to Russian Orthodoxy despite her Lutheran father's objections and took on a new Russian name, Ekaterina or Catherine. Catherine and Peter were an ill-matched pair, from the moment they met, she found him detestable in her memoirs. She described him as a drunk simpleton. When Empress Elizabeth died in 1761, Peter became Emperor Peter III and Catherine his Empress consort. Peter was immediately unpopular as he pulled out of the Seven Years' War and made big concessions to Russia's adversaries in the process. Catherine took the opportunity to seize power and usurp her husband, claiming the throne for her own. She worked with her lover, Grigory Grigorievich Orlov, and her other allies to overthrow him. Peter was killed eight days later. While in the custody of one of Catherine's co-conspirators, she was formally crowned on September 22, 1762. Although Catherine didn't descend from the Romanov dynasty, her position was strengthened because she descended from the Rurik dynasty, which preceded the Romanovs. Catherine was inoculated against smallpox by a British doctor, Thomas Dimsdale, which was controversial at the time. She led the way in embracing the latest medical practices and aimed to popularize inoculations by 1800. Approximately two million inoculations were carried out in the Russian Empire. Early in her life, Catherine began correspondence with the Enlightenment thinker Voltaire, who was fascinated by Russia and although they never met in person, their letters revealed a close friendship. The Empress was a patron of the arts, the Hermitage Museum, which now occupies the Winter Palace, includes Catherine's personal art collection. Catherine also helped to establish the Smolny Institute of Noble. Maidens, the first state-financed higher education institution for women in Europe. Catherine was famously loyal to her lovers, both during and after their relationship, always parting on good terms. She bestowed upon them titles, land, and palaces, she also gifted her lovers with serfs. Owning 500,000 of these peasants, she once gifted a former lover with more than 1,000 serfs. An extremely unhappy marriage from the start. Peter and Catherine both had extramarital affairs. When Catherine gave birth to a son, Paul, after eight years of marriage, Gossips murmured that military officer Sergei Saltikov was the father. It's believed that none of her three children were fathered by Peter. During the 18th century, there were 40 for pretenders in Russia, individuals who claimed they had the right to a title and a higher position. That belonged to someone else. Records state that 26 of them existed during Catherine's reign. This was largely a result of economic problems and increased taxation. 
After the Russo-Turkish War 17681774, Catherine seized this area of land to improve Russian presence in the Black Sea. With various threats of uprisings, the most dangerous came in 1773, when a group of armed Cossacks and peasants rebelled against the harsh socio-economic conditions of Russia's lowest class. The serfs, Catherine soon responded with massive force and executed the leaders of the group. In 1775, Catherine was approached by the Earl of Dartmouth, who sought 20,000 Russian troops to help Britain fight the colonial rebellions in America. Instead, given the interests of Russian shipping in the Atlantic, she made efforts to resolve the conflict in 1780. Russian explorers had been visiting Alaska since 1741. However, it was only in 1784 when merchant Grigory Shelikov sailed to Kodiak Island and established the Three Saints Bay Colony. Catherine's 34-year reign made her one of the longest reigning female monarchs in Russian history. Catherine had a famously stormy relationship with Paul, who she kept far away from state affairs. Things got really bad when Paul was convinced his mother was actively plotting his death. Catherine took control of the upbringing and education of Paul's sons and rumors spread that they would be her heirs. However, the Empress died before her plans were made public. Worried that his mother's wishes would come true, Paul confiscated her documents and became emperor. Alexander, Paul's eldest son, was aware of his grandmother's plans but didn't stand in his father's way. Paul proved to be just as unpopular as Catherine had feared. And five years into his reign, he was assassinated. His son assumed power as Alexander I. Wild rumors flew after Catherine's death, including that she was crushed to death while attempting to have sex with a horse. However, an autopsy revealed that the Empress had actually died of a cerebral stroke. Thank for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more.